think they're preparing binders and there's a whole pot load of stuff that's come in, but um, that's going to be homework for the town planning board. Mm -hmm. We can get it during the season at that, okay. right? If you know, at, up until the time that we close for the, the meeting. Right. So maybe we can have the DK and get that off in time that way. Hopefully, they're going to be distributing it to us before the we close out the meeting time. So that is still going to be a review and all that. So, um, and then. Everybody in place. Good evening, folks. Looking to call the um, public hearing to order Wednesday, June the 8th for 6 p.m. Uh, the purpose of the public hearing is to hear public comments on bylaw number 1621, cited as Colwood Land Use Bylaw number 151, 1989, Amendment number 153, Retaining Wall Regulations, uh, one, bylaw number 1621, 2016. Looking for approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Um, public hearing statement. Bear with me while I read through the following. This public hearing is convened pursuant to section 890 of the Local Government Act to allow the public to make representations to council respecting matters contained in the proposed following bylaw. Colwood Land Use Bylaw number 151, 1989. Amendment number 153, Retaining Wall Regulations, bylaw number 1621, 2016. Every one of you present who believes that your interest in the property affected is the, by the proposed bylaw shall be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard or to present written submissions respecting matters contained in the proposed bylaw. None of you will be discouraged or prevented from making your views known. However, it is important that you restrict your remarks to matters contained in the proposed bylaw. Please, when speaking, commence your remarks clearly by stating your name and address. The function of council this evening at the public hearing is to listen to you rather than debating any merit of the proposed bylaw. After this public hearing has concluded, council may, without further notice, give whatever effect council believes proper to the representations made at this hearing. 
So I hereby declare the public hearing open, and it's up to you folks. So the microphone is there, and we have a recorder at the table. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you. My name is Kathy Duncan. I'm an owner at 543 Latoria Road. Um, we dedicated our property for the entrance off Latoria Road that became Byzantine Way in 2006. With influence from Colwood staff and council at that time, it was decidedly the only safe access point along Latoria to the new neighborhoods being created off Latoria Road. We wanted to show our support of the developers of both Madrona Creek and Coleman Place and to those that would come off Byzantine in the future. Even though those developers were told that they would receive Colwood's approval for a temporary access in a less preferred location, we did not want to hold up the progress of the others. At that time, only a certain few developers had what were called sewer units, and Madrona Creek developer Ian Sperling was one of those very few developers allowed to develop due to his ownership and entitlement of the sewer service. We dedicated the necessary parcel of our property to Colwood in good faith, and although we were called stupid by the mayor at the time, we moved forward to do what we felt was the right thing to do, and that was to provide a permanent and safe access point for the new neighborhoods being created. We've been waiting access to our upper portion of our land since their development permit was issued to us in 2012. Please note this is a six years after we dedicated our land for the access. The adjacent developer, who's also here, was required under his, their development permit to provide access to the lands beyond, which are ours. The road and services are now right at our lot line, finally, in 2016. Our engineer has approved construction drawings from Colwood Engineering Department, and we are closing our tender next week with the awarded contractor expecting to start and complete all of our works during the next 60 days to register together with the adjacent developer which would be our seven of our 11 lots, what we call phase 1.1. 28 lots are due to be registered by the end of July. We've been advised this morning in a meeting with Colwood staff that council can allow the building permits for all the rock wall works that are now required for completing our subdivision on time. We've moved heaven and earth today to, pro to provide Colwood tonight with the detailed descriptions of our rock walls and that are part of our development permit. These walls are all important to the approved design and structure of our tender that is out to all bidders. We agree to apply for those permits immediately. However, we implore council to please exempt 543 Latoria from this bylaw that's on the table tonight, bylaw 1621 as amendment. It's impossible to go backwards and redesign this development using this one-to-one -one series as described. We're in the construction process of an approved subdivision and feel it's unfair and unjust to expect us to incur delays and be forced into any new process that did not exist prior to our works being commenced. We have legal advice, unfortunately, today that we are an active subdivision with a PLA and to continue our construction as it was approved. But we don't want any conflict and instead would ask that council grant these permits tomorrow morning or early in the week and with the city engineers here tonight to go over any detail what building permits entail to insist on each of our approved lots having individual rock walls illustrated beyond what is provided here by our engineer, we feel is unnecessary financial burden, time-consuming tasks that will create much added expense, time delays, reissuing of timelines to our contractors, and ensuring our timeline for completion and registration is impossible. Please allow issuance of the retaining wall per building permits and exempt 543 Latoria Road from the bylaw 1621 that's on the table tonight. And if anyone has any questions with regards to the illustration that our engineer provided, it's a worst case scenario because this bylaw actually forces us to paint a, a worst case scenario to you for permits. Our, we have Will Piraboon who's submitted a letter this afternoon. He's our a designer and our approved official for all the residential buildings and the approval process for the design guidelines that are being drafted and, and going to be part of our, um, our entire subdivision for any buyers entering into it. Um, Will Piriboom's written a letter. I don't really want to take up everyone's time with me reading the letters that we've submitted today, but the designer, um, Will Piriboom from Victoria Design, wrote the letter and you know he, he's trying to explain that 
when you're developing and you're allowing building permits and, and we have an approving officer approving each and every building that's going on the site, a very detailed grading plan is already being submitted to planning and engineering. And we've gone over the top on trying to get that the designated lot grade for heights and having each individual lot um, with an individual lot design that, that actually prohibits excess blasting and ensures that foundation walls are up so that we can backfill to them and eliminating the amount of rock walls. But if this bylaw goes through today and we aren't exempt from it, we have no, nothing else to do but to seek approvals for the building permits on walls that we probably won't even be building because we have to look at the worst case scenario. We, we haven't even finished site prepping yet. We've got contractors that are on site. We've got, they're gonna leave if they pull their machines off because of going into a new process. Um, you know, we, we just implore um, council to please, you know, under the, under the uh, Local Government Act, Division 14, John Alexander is our mutual lawyer. You know, he's, he's given us legal advice that, you know, we are an active subdivision with a PLA. We're in construction. It's been started. We want to have our building permits for the rock walls. We understand that that, that process will accept that, but please keep us exempt from this bylaw on the table tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Duncan. We do have information that was provided to us, but it has not yet been reviewed by council, so um, that will happen at a different time in the process here. Any further members of the public? Uh, Anthony Moore, 421 Pelican Drive. Uh, the members of council know that uh, you know we've had a problem, and I guess part of the uh, the bylaw amendment w related really to some of the issues that came about at uh, 421 Pelican Drive. Uh, sorry, 367 to uh, um, Seashell Place, uh, where a substantial wall was constructed. Uh, you know outside of what we consider to be the building scheme and in fact some of the, the regulations that should have been applied. Uh, so we as a, as a community welcome in fact the, the principle of staggering um, uh, walls, retaining walls, so we're not faced with uh, uh, three more uh, homes that are constructed in similar manner. So we, we welcome the principle. Uh, I just want to uh, mention the BC Building Code, and it certainly applies to the uh, to the construction that's occurring in other subdivisions. The lady that just spoke um, probably realizes that it's not just a bylaw; there is a BC Building Code requirement that um, the base of a, a uh, retaining wall and the house a house foundation, ha if it's within 45 degrees, has to have approval by a uh, an engineer. It has to be inspected. Uh, and uh, so it's not just a bylaw, there's a BC building code that might simply limit the, uh, the area that's available when a, when a wall is constructed and a house is, is placed on the flat area that's, that's, um, that's intended. Um, the, the last point I want to make really is, is there's no mention in the bylaw of the, the bearing inspection. Uh, that's the, the portion of, of uh, ground that may be prepared or may, may be natural rock that the wall actually sits on. And that's a requirement really for if it's built up uh, and compacted, it still has to be inspected by a geotechnical engineer or at least somebody that, that is uh, appropriately uh, qualified to, to make the, uh, the judgment on whether it's safe. Uh, I, I guess those are the three points that I wanted to make. Uh, in general, we welcome the, uh, the, um, the new regulation uh, in the hope that it will prevent you know, some of the monstrous walls that we see that people are quite frankly uh, scared to, to drive past. I mean, I've, I've known people that said, I'm walking the other side of the road. I'm not walking under that wall. So, so we welcome the opportunity for, for change. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public? My name is John Newton, and I represent Homewood Constructors Limited and the owners of 517-525 Victoria Road. Um, 
we're probably um, the ones who have created this council here tonight. Um, but I want to assure the public that we do have uh, geotechnical engineers and the wall that we did build on uh, uh, Victoria Road that's not finished is um, designed by um, a geotechnical engineer. We've had structural engineers look at it as well. And um, although it's, it is high, it is actually uh, two and a half meters lower than what was approved originally for the site. And I'm not sure if in your paperwork you have um, uh, renderings that we provided for the uh, site, but the, the only thing that's not finished is the landscaping. That's correct. And um, basically that is what the wall looks like. It's, it, it is a little bit lower. Anyways, our, um, we received a um, development permit in June 5th, 2008. We've owned the land for 22 years, over 22 years, and we bought the property with the intention of uh, rezoning it and developing it. Um, in June 5th, 2008, right after we got the development permit, if you remember, in September, the world went in a big spiral, and um, a lot of projects, including ours, got thrown on the shelf, and uh, we waited. And in May of 2011, we engaged Focus Corporation to go into detailed design for the subdivision. And we spent probably almost, well, I said two years here, but uh, on July 8th of 2013, we went through six engineers and um, spent a lot of time getting the design. And in July 2013, uh, we got a letter from Colwood that gave us approval to in construct the site for the city. That lot is very much like, or that our land is very much like Pelican as you enter, you go up and around a circle. So every lot is stepped as it goes up. And on those plans, there was a elevation uh, of where the footprint of the basement would be. And um, each one had different steps. And um, we actually lowered the road at the very top by um, a meter and a half and then to reduce the slope that was going up there that Focus has designed, and then we lowered the wall again by um, a good meter to a meter and a half. And um, uh, those lots have in between them, they have individual walls that will be needed to um, uh, separate the houses. Um, we, the, the big wall is finished. We've built a couple of other um, fairly high walls up on the site. Um, we do have the, the walls that are remaining are um, mostly um, 1.2 or, or um, meet at 1.8, something like that in height. Um, they're walls that will not be seen by the public. They're going to be seen only by their neighbors. And uh, um, we've allowed for the worst case tonight for you to see um, where the walls are. Um, our designer believes that um, a lot of those walls will be eliminated with the construction of the home, and there may only be um, um, a smaller um, three-foot wall between the lots if part of the house is used as the foundation, as the retaining wall foundation. So, but we do have some lots, um, uh, our lots 13 to uh, 16, that do need a wall built up behind it, and it's up to five meters. And we're going to do half that wall in concrete and half the other half in a step, uh, three meter high step wall. The, um, the houses on our um, road C will be three story because you'll drive into the house and your garage is on the lower floor, you'll walk up and you'll have a, you'll walk out into your backyard and then there's um, another level up for bedrooms. So from the street, they're three story. Um, going up um, uh, our main road from the start, everything's one story with a daylight basement at the back. Um, 
we need that wall because the rock has been overblasted. It was um, um, a rotten rock, as they call it. And um, uh, to make the upper lots work, they have to, it has to be filled in. Um, we've been crushing material, and I know that's another sore point with the neighbors, but we're just about done. We have less than 60 days to finish the what we call phase 1.1. And perhaps another two months to get an in phase 1.1 there would be um, 21 lots plus Miss Duncan's um, sev um, seven lots, and then later there would be um, in about two months later we're we're um, going to have nine lots, and um, uh, Miss Duncan will have four, and that will be the end of phase one. So by the end of September we we should be done. So what we're asking is, um, because we're so close, because we're in process, because we've paid our fees, um, and the walls left are not walls that are going to affect the public or that the public is going to be concerned about. It's going to be walls that the owners will, will either behind the houses, the big tall ones, so they won't be seen, or the other ones are going to divide the house, the lots. So um, we're asking that uh, you exempt us from this bylaw and let us finish. We're so close, and um, issue the permits for the walls that we have asked for. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Any further members of the public? Hello, Chad Pretzel, 446 Pelican. So we're just a residential, uh, we bought a lot. We've been looking at it for about three years. It came on the market. We immediately put an offer in. This, we closed on it March 15th. Prior to that, we came into the, talk to the city of Colwood just to figure out what we could and couldn't do because it was a substantial sloping lot. So we spoke to planning, we spoke to the building inspectors, once we closed, they said, no problem, you can site prep and grub. We explained what the retaining wall was going to look like. Um, so we did that. The end of March, we called up uh, the geotechnical engineers because we had to have a geotechnically engineered retaining wall. They came in, they did their thing. Middle of April, we came in with our engineered drawings um, to speak with planning again. And at no point in time did they indicate that there was a proposed bylaw coming into effect that there were some open houses and some uh, hearings coming up. So uh, we attempted to put our, sorry, we basically got the runaround three, four weeks in a row. We talked to the planning guys and we had to meet up with uh, the assistant deputy director of planning, Evo. We sit down, he says, what do you want? He said, we got the plans right here. And this was a week before the May 11th when you guys actually came out with the, you know, here's the, uh, the plan. So we came back in, tried to submit our building application. It was refused on advice from our lawyer. It said, go in with a sealed envelope, leave it there. They can't refuse it. That didn't happen until the end of uh, May because in good faith, you know, when the planning guys are saying, you know, don't talk to your lawyers, let's try and work it out internally, we agreed. Um, so now we're just asking that our building permit be approved, exempt us from this bylaw, so what we have estimated, the retaining wall is going to cost about $60,000 to build. And if we have to do this tiered thing, we're going to lose about 30% of our lot. It's only 12,000 square feet to begin with. So we just want a flat lot. Thank you. You're all good, Mr. Pretzel. Thank you. Hi, uh, 
wasn't really planning on talking here. Um, my name is Inga Farah. We live on 419 Pelican Drive. Um, this is new to me of what was just presented, uh, what was going to be supposed to happen on 446 Pelican Drive. I'd just like to point out uh, that maybe the gentleman and his wife do not know that we uh, also have a statutory building scheme in place. But uh, he didn't mention this. Um, actually, the plan, but the, his plans would have to be submitted to the administrator of our building scheme um, to approve um, of what he's intending. So um, basically, I just want to bring that up. And secondly, in regards to the comments of the developers, I can appreciate what they're doing, but they should just look at the overall picture and the outrage what, this, what the community has in regards to the current build. Uh, apart, apart from that, I can't really say very much because I don't know too much about it. I just see massive, massive rock walls, and it's almost uh, unbelievable what has happened. Back to uh, Pelican Drive, I would appreciate if the gentleman who presented his complaint that he goes through and presents his plans to the uh, administrator of our statutory building scheme for his approval before he approaches the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other members of the public to talk on the bylaw? You saw me looking your way, Mr. Coburn. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Rex Coburn, 4529 Perry Crossroad. Uh, director of Andrex Developments, 1985 LTD. Um, I was at the open house when they had this, when this came up. I certainly didn't see a word of the people that are here tonight. So, Can I get you just to speak up a little bit louder because I am I having was trouble. The, I was at the open house, uh, Madam Mayor, and, and it wasn't 25% wasn't of the people that are here tonight, so obviously something has their attention. Uh, I'm going to start by saying with, as, as Kathy Duncan had said, that ask that Andrex be exempted from this. We, we made a, an application for a 69 lot subdivision in March of 2013 from the city and have yet to receive a PLA. And, um, you know, we could have, we could have and probably should have been well on our way into that thing by now and probably have had the retaining walls built. But I want to stress to the public a couple of things and to this, and to this committee and for the public hearing that. Um, the geotechnical aspect of these walls is always looked after, and it's uh, the city has maintained uh, that the uh, it's the onus is on the developer to provide that geotechnical certification prior to registration of the subdivision. So um, the walls should be technically sound, and um, and I want to add too that developers don't build these walls because they want to; they build them so that there's some kind of a a uniformity to landscaping when the projects are done. And if you see that we've used up all our flat ground around here now, we're into the sides of the hills. And just like in Japan where they have their terracing there, it's been happening for centuries. We just have to make sure they're safe. When I attended the, the open house, the consultant wasn't talking about a four foot high wall. I mean, if we go with that, you guys are gonna be faced with variance after variance applications, and I don't think it's necessary. I mean, there's got to be something more reasonable than four feet. Um, and it's four feet from the finished grade. So that can complicate things, e things even more. And besides that, it could end up being very restrictive on the building footprints. Um, there's all kinds of issues that come into play here. I, I personally believe that this thing should be revisited, and perhaps even another, another, um, like we've had with the developing community before. We've had meetings in COVID where there's been members of council, members of staff, and and the affected people sat down and trying to work through some of the things. I came to the meeting. I brought Livo Hurtado from Victoria Stillingscape, who does all our work. I mean, it's, it's all professional, very good work. There's nothing that we left in the comments. It's, it's like we didn't even attend. So I think you should put the brakes on, go back and, uh, and maybe, maybe revisit it and maybe come, come up with some form of a compromise before you slam this thing through. Again, we don't do it because we want to. 
And if you look at the project and where it has been implemented, and you look at the finished product after the houses are in on landscape and you get, especially on a hill like we get terracing like this, if they're all done uniformly, it looks fine. Those are my comments. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Any further members of the public? Hello, uh, Ken Swenson, 3665 Seashell Place. Um, just as a, uh, an interested member of the public, I'd like to find out, I've been here now to three or four of these meetings, and we always put forward suggestions or complaints and this, that, and that. And from speaking for myself, I never find the results. Like, how do we find out what you guys are work working on? How do we find out what you guys are uh, coming to conclusions on? We're just we're left in the dark. It seems like, especially with a with an earlier complaint that we've had uh, that you know we've sat and talked to you guys about it before. Where do we go with this? I mean, we're being the sheriff for uh, uh, for you people, and it, it shouldn't be that way around. I don't believe. I, you know, we pay our taxes and we go forward and try to be diligent uh, 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 neighbors for everybody here, and we keep on bringing complaints forward, and yet we never see any evidence of what's going on. Like, you, are you responding to this? Are you letting us know? How do we continue to keep on going for this? You guys are here supposedly to protect us and, and take care of everybody in the neighborhood uh, correctly. And when we have all these complaints, and I know we've been fighting one now for a year and a half, and personally, I don't know where we are with this, and that's no way to build a community. So I'd, I'd like to find out somehow how we could come in with specifically for our complaints or other complaints and find out what progress Colwood is making on these things so we know where we where we stand instead of just throwing stones like we're doing. Um, that's all. Thank you. Okay, I think, and I'll take your your points as made, but it's not really bylaw related, so um, I think we'll have that captured by uh, another portion of things, but thank you. Uh, any further comments or participation from the public on the bylaw? The bylaw that uh, that is being introduced, obviously uh, uh, new to Colwood, but um, I would point out that many municipalities have almost identical um, bylaws. Uh, the only difference here may be that uh, you know, as we hit higher ground on development, that becomes more of an issue. But certainly, it's a, it's a, it's a primarily a safety issue. There's some aesthetics. I look at some of the walls that have been built in Colwood. Uh, and just beautiful subdivisions, you know, and uh, exemplary in the way they've been designed. Uh, walls have been built, and aesthetics are wonderful. Uh, there are other places where, you know, this has failed miserably. And this, this bylaw is, in, in fact, I hope intended to address the primarily the safety issue, but also the aesthetics. I look at staggered walls where landscaping has been uh, applied, the, uh, the, the, the uh, townhouses around uh, Red Barn, a uh, prime example, you know, where you look at it and say, gee, that's a great job. You know, the walls are a little higher. Maybe they're not sort of uh, six feet up and six, six feet across, but they, they look wonderful. Uh, I drive past it with envy, in fact, when I look at what we have. So once again, we welcome the, uh, the regulations as, a, uh, as a, a subdivision and hope that it will be applied, you know, uh, uh, in, in properly and uh, that it, it enhances Colwood. Thank you. Thank you. Any further members of the public wishing to address council? My name is uh, Chris Troke. I'm uh, owner at uh, 535 Latoria, uh, part of the uh, subdivision that's happening up there. Given the um, sort of the late notice uh, of, uh, of what's happened here with the amendment request, so we've got a letter here submitted today from um, from our engineer Jared Steingart at West uh, wet, at Westbrook uh, Engineering. As far as uh, do you have this letter, by the way, everyone? I believe we do. Yes, I'm going to assume everyone's read it. That would be good. Um, but as far as a couple of highlighted points here, I just want to bring it to everyone's attention so the, the public can hear it as well. Now, as far as um, one of the highlight points here. So requiring a, DV, uh, a DVP to allow walls over 1.2 will affect a development project by adding considerable amounts of time and money. Um, so as far as, as, far as um, 
his highlighted points here. Um, there's another one here. Additional DVP applications will consume staff time and busy the council agendas. As far as, far as uh, some other points here, he's got new project with walls between 1.2 to 3 meters can be dealt with at a staff level with internal approvals. Staff would have the dis discretion to involve council should they feel the decision is, a, is of pu public interest. Two other points here. Walls fronting existing public roads would require form and character approval, which I think this point is quite relevant because of the size of the walls that, uh, that have gone on in, in the municipality and elsewhere for that matter. The intent to have a, a beautification of the development with respect to the walls can happen when they do these designs as well. So we would encourage you to, uh, uh, to, to have these internal uh, discussions at the council level rather than amend this bylaw. Uh, uh, engineering, there's another one. Engineering plans for subdivisions would include, uh, include a detailed lot grading plan identifying walls, slopes, and retaining structures. The drawing submission would also be coordinated with a geotechnical or structural engineer who would provide the technical details related to the retaining walls. <coughs> The submission would also include British Columbia Building Code letters of assurance. And again, I think just through from this gentleman's comments here, the idea that you know we're building into the side of mountains all over the all over the place. No, excuse me, sorry, I wasn't expecting to speak tonight. Sorry, but um, but from there, the idea is, is that this is going to continue, and so to impede our ability to do these with, with, with time and uh, in a timely manner, and tying up all you council members and engineers and city planners with something like this, um, you know, it seems a little bit. Uh, somewhat redundant, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any further interaction with the public? Sorry, um, I should have really commented on, again, my name is Inga Power, 419 Pelican Drive. I was a little taken abreast when I heard the previous um, intent of the uh, owners on Pelican Drive. Basically, uh, I like to just stress at this point, um, we're very happy that uh, Carwood has finally decided to put a uh, amendment of a bylaw in place. I think it's um, actually overdue based on what we had to incur during the last year and a half. And I can appreciate the comments of the developers However, uh, I think the feelings and the overall um, um, views of the, of the uh, subdivision should also be uh, considered. Um, if you look around Royal Bay subdivision, you see of, uh, how nicely um, everything has been done in regards to retaining wall and landscaping, et cetera. Well, again, I'm not quite sure of what, um, you know, what has happened on Latoria Road. I can just... Um, give my opinion in regards to what what we can see. It looks outrageous again to us. Um, and I think, I just want to emphasize, emphasize at this moment that I think it's very commendable that Carwood has taken the time to finally put a bylaw in place which governs um, retaining walls. Thank you very much. Thank you. and councils. Mm, I will try to make my English better, <laughs> but I just want to make it clear. Your, I'm very your name glad. first, please. My name is Wen Gail from 427 Pelican Drive. And I just want to make it clear, I'm very happy to see this change on bylaws. I'm fully support this one. Why? Because I believe every change on bylaws or if the things we build, we will try to make our neighborhood better. We want to make Coralwood a better place to live. And I really wish this bylaws was there years, years ago. So the mistake happened in CCL, the brain wall it won't be there. I know the owner, when they buy the lot, they want to have a flat land to live. But because the bylaw is not there, and they thought they can do all the returning works, they change the nature to make what they want. And however, it make the neighborhood look terrible. And the things, the returning war on Victoria Road, I'm sorry. Um, I got a lot of friends visiting here. Every time when I drive by the place, they all ask me, what's happening here? Do you dare to walk beside there with a rock fell? 
It's all these kind of questions that make people feel it's not a safe place to live. That's the nature of color with the land fears on the slope. We are not out of land to fear a house to live. There are still a lot of places you can build the house without changing the beauty, the nature of color wood. So I'm fully support this change. I really wish it was there years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Duncan. Uh, Kathy Duncan, Ed, 543 Latoria. Um, this is not our wall. Um, this is the adjacent developer's wall. But I'm, I'm just going to share it about the folks that are um, really kind of upset by the wall. Um, in, in the adjacent developer's defense, it, it's not finished. It, it's not landscape. And, you know, even when the environmentalists, when we had to take the trees down, and I was the only one up there crying, and the lady from NCON said, I've never had a developer cry when trees come down before. You know, <laughs> and they told me that you have to just understand that it's, a, it's an ugly work in progress. But at the end of the day, these are beautiful neighborhoods. You're quite right. They're beautiful neighborhoods. Give it some time. I promise. This gentleman right here is an award-winning developer. Year after year after year, he's going up, getting up awards, care awards. He's going to do a beautiful job. Give him a chance to finish it. Give us a chance to finish it. OK, I do. Mr. Mort, I have to stop. It's not anyway, a debate between each no, other. And or I just wanted us. to say Thank that you. it's just not finished. There's no landscaping down on it. The trees aren't in. We've got a beautiful um, mandated um, you know, landscape design that was part of the planning, the planning um, process of these subdivisions being approved. And once those trees are in and the watering systems in, it's going to be beautiful. I promise. Mr. Pretzel? Chad Pretzel, 446 Pelican. Um, just another note, the way that those, the site administrator, you know, reviewing building plans and whatnot, uh, we understand and appreciate uh, that is uh, required. Our house would be a walkout basement, so the retaining wall would actually be about six feet below the street grade, It would, and it borders a park. So we're not impeding anybody's ability to you know, for their sight lines or anything else like that. Again, so I encourage you to go up there. We had a site plan visit with uh, the assistant director, assistant deputy director of planning and a planning technician, and they all agreed that, you know, it's not going to affect anybody um, materially. And the site administrator um, agrees that uh, it will meet the requirements. Thank you. And again, anyone speaking to the bylaw? Going to ask a second time, is there any speakers that want to step to the microphone in regards to the bylaw? Third and final time, folks. Anyone that wants to get their last bit of information in on the bylaw? Just to understand that when we close this meeting, no further information can be received by council and we will be reviewing the information as provided. And that will be done at a later date. So finally, no further speakers. I hereby close the public hearing on bylaw number 1621. Looking for adjournment. Second. Seconder. All those in favor? Opposed, motion carried. Thank you folks. This information has been provided to you as well this evening. So we need to email that to some people that uh, had written to us that they wanted to make different additions. 